Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for being with us here today for another OIC-sponsored webinar presentation. My name is Ken Keating, and I'm a senior instructor here at the OIC, and I'll be giving today's presentation on the directional butterfly. Just to give you a quick background on myself, before coming to the OIC, I was a professional floor market maker, floor specialist, off floor prop trader, risk manager, as well as a derivatives analyst and I did that for over 25 years. So currently I'm at the OIC helping individuals such as yourselves to better understand the risks and benefits of exchange traded options. So before we get started, have to uh, go through the disclaimer and the disclaimer, uh, options do involve risk and are not suitable for everyone. So anyone who trades options should read and understand the disclosure document, the risks and characteristics of exchange traded options. You can obtain a copy either through your broker or by visiting us at optionseducation.org. In order to simplify the calculations used today, commission fees, margin interest, and taxes have not been included. And lastly, any strategies discussed here today are strictly for illustrative and educational purposes and should not be construed as an endorsement recommendation or solicitation to buy or sell securities on behalf of the OIC. So who is the OIC? The OIC is the Options Industry Council. We are the leader in free and unbiased options education. We do that primarily through our parent company, the OCC. And who is the OCC? The OCC is the world's largest equity options clearing House for options and futures, and the Foundation for Secure Markets in the United States of America. So we do that, uh, we are fully funded by the OCC, and we do that primarily through our website, optionseducation.org. There you'll find online courses, podcasts, videos, as well as webinars. The pride and joy of the OIC is the our investor services desk, which can be reached at options at the OCC.com and you can reach us Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Standard Time with any and all of your options-related questions. So quickly, uh, for a quick look at the um, annual options volume over the years. So option volumes, uh, options started in 1973 on the CBOE. We started trading on 16 different issues. Uh, I think the very first day, Option volume is about 920 contracts. You contrast that today with um, option volumes that are in excess of anywhere from 18 to 20 million contracts a day. So 2018 was a record year for OCC where we cleared and settled 5.2 billion contracts. That's with a B. And as you can see, the trajectory of options trading has really picked up over the last 20 years. And um, Lately, option volumes have certainly, especially for 2020, have, have been really high. So on any given day, we average anywhere from about 15 to 20 million contracts a day. And option volumes have been averaging about 28 million contracts in 2020. So certainly no lack of investors using options to uh, hedge and position themselves amidst all the tremendous volatility that we have seen lately. So here is a list of the options exchanges. There's five main parent exchanges. There's the box, the CBOE, MIAX, NASDAQ, and NYSE. And these are the exchanges where your options orders get routed to. So these six, five main parent exchanges control 16 different sub-exchanges. And uh, this is where your orders get routed to when you buy and sell your options. So here's today's presentation outline. We are going to take a look at a recap of vertical spread. So many of you who attended the last webinar, we did an in-depth look at both debit and credit spreads. Uh, we're going to go over those really quick because what we're going to do is we're going to take these vertical spreads and we're going to combine them into uh, an even bigger spread, which is known as the traditional butterfly. We're also going to look at ways that we can position the butterfly to 
uh, take a directional bias, both bearish and bullish. And then we're going to look at strike selection as well as managing positions at expiration. Along the way, Q&A is going to be conducted. My colleagues Mark Benzaquin and Bill Ryan are behind the scenes as we speak, answering your questions in real time. So you can uh, access that box by clicking the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. And uh, certainly uh, we will answer your questions in real time. If for whatever reason we can't get to one of your questions today, somebody on our investor services team will reach out to you within the next 24 hours with an answer to your question. Just to answer the most frequently asked or one of the most frequently asked questions that we get through the, through the throughout the presentation is can I view this webinar after the event? And the quick answer is yes. After the event, you can access this webinar by using the same link that you use to, to access the webinar today. If you want to revisit some of the topics, if there's some concepts you want to go over, uh, as well as downloading the PDF for your records. So um, you're f certainly free to do that after the event as well. All right, so let's take a look at vertical spreads. So vertical spreads, what is a spread? Well, simply put, a spread involves two or more positions. So it's either the buying or selling of one option and the buying or selling of another option against it, or it could also be the buying of one option and selling of an option or buying or selling a stock against that option. So a spread may have the same or different underlying asset. It may have the same or underlying um, or different expiration dates. It may have the same or different strike prices. So today, for our purposes, we're going to be looking strictly at vertical spreads. So there's many different types of spreads. Um, there are vertical spreads, there's horizontal spreads and diagonal spreads. Like I said today, we're going to be just focusing on vertical spreads. Uh, a horizontal or time spread uh, would simply be a spread involving the same strike but a different month. So maybe somebody would buy a, um, a January 30 call and sell a <clears throat> July 30 call against it. That would be an example of a long time spread. A uh, diagonal spread would be if somebody bought, say, maybe a Jan 50 call and sold a July 65 call against it. So, you know, different months, different strikes. But for today, we're just going to be looking at vertical spreads. So vertical spreads can either be all calls or all puts, same expiration, and different strikes. So the first example that we're using here, so on the left, you see that we have the Nov 8590 call spread. So in this case, if we had if we bought the 85 calls and sold the 90 calls against them, that would be we would be long the 8590 call spread. So this would be a bull call spread because obviously we would like the stock to finish at 90 or above on or before expiration, where the spread would achieve its maximum value of five dollars. If the spread closed, if the stock closed at 85 or below, both options would expire worthless and we would just, we would, they, they'd have no value and we would lose any money that we paid for that spread. So anytime we buy a spread, we pay a debit, okay, that would be called the debit spread. So this example is a bull call spread. We could flip it around and also have a bear put spread. So if these were puts and we say we bought the 90 puts and sold the 85 puts against them, that would be a bear put spread, and we would incur a debit to do that because the 90 put would be more expensive than the 85 put. So both bullish and bearish ways to use debit spreads to position. On the flip side, we have credit spreads. So in this example, we have a Jan 80, 90 bear call spread. So in this case, we would be selling the more expensive 80 strike call and we would be purchasing the less expensive 90 strike call. So because we're selling the more expensive strike, we would be incurring a net credit to do that. And obviously we would want the stock to go down because if the stock closes at 80 or below, both options would expire worthless and we would get to keep the credit that we sold that spread for. Um, likewise, from a bull perspective, if we flip this around and we 
bought the 80 put and sold the 90 put, well, we would also receive a credit because the 90 put would be trading from higher price than the 80 put. And in that case, we would want the stock to close at 90 or above where both options would expire worthless and we would keep the full credit. So also, you know, we can take a, um, a bear or a bullish position using a credit spread as well. So why do we like verticals? Well, we like verticals because the maximum risk and reward are defined up front. In other words, it allows us to trade with our eyes wide open. So once again, a vertical spread, the maximum risk that we, we take is the debit that we paid for the spread. So if we bought a 40, 45 call spread for a dollar, the most we can lose is the dollar we paid for it. And the maximum reward is the difference in strike minus the premium that we paid. So if it was a 45, 40, 45 call spread, we paid a dollar for it. The difference in strike is $5. We paid a dollar for it. So five minus a dollar is four. So we're risking $1 to make four in that case. On the flip side, a credit spread is just the opposite. So the maximum reward that we can make when we take in a credit, when we do a credit spread, is the, is the credit that we do that spread for. That's the most we can make. And our maximum risk is the difference in strike minus the credit received. So one of the things that you got to keep in mind when you're <clears throat> trading vertical spreads is these risk-reward dynamics of a vertical spread. They only exist within the position itself. So what does that mean? Well, what that means is that if you chose to exercise your longs, or one of your long sides, or you got assigned on the short side, that would completely throw off the risk-reward parameters of the vertical spread and change the position entirely. So just know that these defined risk-reward characteristics only exist within the spread itself. All right, so let's get into, that's enough for vertical spreads. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at combining vertical spreads and create what's known as the butterfly. So what exactly is a long butterfly? Well, simply put, a long butterfly is the combination of either a bull call spread and a bear call spread, so a debit spread and a credit spread, or in the case of puts, a bear put spread and a bull put spread. So a debit spread and a credit spread. So it always consists of three option series, either all calls or all puts for the traditional butterfly. The strikes have to be an equal dis distance apart, and we're always incurring a net debit to do that. So why do we like doing butterflies? Well, simply put, butterflies define our risk. We know what, we can, what we're risking up front. It's so they're cost effective. If we're looking at a at the money butterfly, then we are most likely gonna be delta neutral or market neutral on our position. Theta, in that case, would be working in our favor, so it's time decay. So those options, all options decay a little bit every, every day, but since we would be long one contract, short two contracts, long one, we're contract neutral, but in the case of an at-the-money butterfly, we would be short the inside strikes, and we're, we're going to show that in a minute, but um, theta in that case would be working in our favor. So... The beauty of a butterfly is it allows us to sell high implied volatility with limited risk. And what does that mean? Well, simply put, when, when traders talk about high implied volatility, all they're talking about is options prices. So when I was on the floor trading, traders never talk about option prices. They never say, say I, you know, I bought this, this call spread for two bucks a hundred times. We'd always say, well, we bought a 30 vol and we sold a 33 vol or something like that. It's always, everything was priced in terms of vol. So when anytime traders talk about implied volatility or vol, what they're, they're talking about is option prices. So a butterfly allows you to sell high or expensive options with limited risk. And another beauty of the butterfly is it allows you to take not only a neutral stance on a particular security, 
but also a bullish or bearish stance in the case of an out of the money call butterfly or an out of the money put butterfly. So there are four basic types of vertical spreads. So we're gonna combine vertical spreads in this case to build the butterfly or a more advanced strategy. So in the case of calls, we have the bull call spread, which is a debit spread. And when we combine that with a bear call spread or a credit spread, we have the call butterfly. So we're long one, short two, long one. So the short strikes, the strikes that were short are the same strike. So we're long one, short two, long one. When we do the same thing with the puts, we combine a bull put spread, which is a credit spread, with a bear put spread, which is a debit spread. So once again, long one, short two, long one. So as you can see, we're taking two separate spreads and combining it into an entirely new type of spread or position known as the butterfly. So let's take a look at this. So let's put this into action. So we have a stock, it's trading roughly $55 and it's about 30 days to go to expiration. And maybe this stock, there's no earnings coming up. Maybe the volatility is a little bit on the higher end. Um, stock has rallied from $50 up to 55. Maybe it's hit some resistance at 55. And we think that over the next month that this stock is going to trade around the 55 level. Maybe it trades down to 54, <clears throat> maybe it trades up to 56, but you know, ideally we'd like it to trade around 55 and we think going to summer and it's gonna quiet down somewhat, maybe not so much this year, things quieting down, but you know, if we think that going forward, the, this particular issue is gonna quiet down, um, we might look to put on a butterfly. So we look at our options chain and we see that we can buy the July 50, 55, 60 call butterfly for $1.20 or 120 per spread. And um, you can see for long one, short two, long one. So it's two spreads in one. We've bought one July 50, 55 call spread, and we've also sold one July 55, 60 spread. And so we've taken two different spreads, combined them into the butterfly. So the tails or the, the what they call the wings, the, the contracts that were long are, um, are wings and the body, the inside ones that were short, that's our body. So that's how it comes up with the name, the butterfly. So the long strikes are our wings, the two that were short is the body. So what happens at expiration? So let's, jump forward and just say it's expiration now. We have this butterfly on for $1.20 and the stock is right at 55, okay? It's right where we want it to be. So what are our break evens on this trade? Well, our break evens is the lower strike plus the debit that we paid. So 50, the 50 strike plus the $1.20 we paid. So 51.20 is one break even. The break even on the upside is the long 60 strike minus the debit that we paid, so 58.80. So anywhere between 51.20 and 58.80 is our zone of profit. So you know roughly a $7.60 range on the stock. So if the stock is anywhere within that range at expiration, this, this butterfly is gonna be profitable. What's the max loss that we can lose on this? Well, it's the debit that we paid, the $1.20. And our maximum profit is the difference in strike, the $5 minus the $1.20 that we paid for the butterfly or $3.80 or $380 per contract. So let's take a look at what this is. Now, obviously this is right at expiration. So if this were expiration and this stock went right out at 55, this is the best, this is the best it gets for the butterfly. Now, in, re, in reality, most traders would choose to take these butterflies off or close them down on or before expiration and take profits earlier because they don't want to deal with what's known as pin risk. So what does that mean? Well, if the stock goes right out at 55, let's examine this position. Your 50 call that you're long is going to be worth $5, okay? Because the stock's at 55, you're long the 50 call, it's worth $5. Your 55 calls 
would go out worthless and your 60 calls would go out worthless. So you made $5, you paid $1.20, you made your 380. But that also, you know, if you, if you carried this position through expiration and you didn't get assigned on your 55 calls, you would have to exercise your 50 call. And if you're not willing to take possession of long stock, then you might want to close the position down. Plus, if you exercise the 50 call and you didn't get assigned on your 55 calls and on Monday morning the stock gap down, well, you'd be long the stock on Monday morning, so you have stock risk. On the flip side, what if the stock goes right out of 55 and you get assigned on your 55 calls? Well, now you'd exercise your long 50 call, you'd be long 100 shares, if you got assigned on both of your 55 calls, now you'd be short 200 shares. So you'd be long 100 shares, short 200 shares for a net short 100 shares. You'd come on on Monday morning and you would be short 100 shares and now you have gap risk to the upside. So to alleviate that and mitigate the, the having to exercise your long or, or potentially get assigned on your short contracts, most traders would close out these butterflies before expiration or on expiration and achieve a profit, but not maybe not the, the full 380 that you see in this theoretical example. Okay, so that is looking at an at the money butterfly. And when I say at the money butterfly, that means with the word short the body, okay, the inside strikes. Now we're gonna take a look and take a directional bias using a butterfly. So we have our investor here who's looking at a software company, MISS, it's a $53 a share software company. And our investor thinks that this stock has a, not a good chance of you know, reporting good earnings and missing their numbers and could fall by roughly 15 cents or 15% be, before or when the earnings are reported before settling into support. So rather than shorting the shares, which entails unlimited upside exposure, they're looking to purchase an out-of-the-money butterfly. So what's the trade setup? So let's say we have 14 days to go to expiration and earnings are in about seven days. So we look out on our options chain and we see that we can buy the July 50, 45, 40 put butterfly. And when we do the math through the magic of PowerPoint, the, the net debit on that spread is 60 cents or $60 per spread. So obviously it's an out of the money butterfly because the shares are trading 53 and uh, our butterfly is below the market. So this gives us a targeted zone centered around the 45 level. So remember, we, our investor thinks that the stock is gonna drop about 15%. That gets us to around $45 a share. The cost of each spread is $60 or 60 cents for a maximum profit of 440 per spread with the stock right at, ex, right at uh, 45 at expiration. The trade makes money with the stock trading anywhere between 4060 and 4940. So nearly a $9 range on the stock for us to be profitable. And lastly, we're looking to use the directional butterfly because it's a less expensive way to play in this case a bullish, I'm sorry, a bearish forecast on this particular stock. So here's our butterfly, we've put it on. What do our break-evens look like? Well, our break-evens, as I said earlier, it's the lower long strike plus the debit that we paid, 60 cents, so 4060. Our next break-even on the, uh, the longer, the, the higher long strike that we have, $50 minus the debit that we paid. So Anywhere between 4060 and 4940 is our zone of profit. So we paid 60 cents for this, for this uh, butterfly. Our max loss is 60 cents. Our max profit is $4.40. And, and just also keep in mind that that's right at expiration. Most traders would choose to take with this butterfly off well before expiration or maybe on expiration. So let's take a look at how this looks. So here we have our butterfly, and you can see that I've added a column, third from the right, called volatility. And the volatility, when we put this position on, is rather high. Well, it's before earnings, and implied volatility tends to be higher before earnings, and that's because options are forward-looking 
contracts. So the options market is trying to discount what the expected move is of a particular security. So in this case, it's a software company. Volatility, maybe it moves around a lot for earnings, so the volatility is going to be tend to be somewhat higher into earnings. So this, as you can see, the volatilities are somewhat high, but by doing a butterfly, it allows us to sell high implied volatility and limit our risk. So we paid 60 cents for the butterfly. And let's just say seven days from now, in the first example, stock goes down to 50. So it doesn't quite reach our 45 level, but it still goes down $3. And you can see that the volatility, in this case, goes down 25 points. That's called the volatility crush. So now that the earnings are out, the news is out, there's no need for those options to be priced at a very high level. So the volatility gets taken out of the options, almost deflated, and those options are worth less, which is something that we were counting on because we're, you know, we're looking to sell high implied volatility and take advantage of that vol crush. And as you can see, the, our butterfly has expanded to a dollar and five cents. So that's a 75% return our, on our initial investment, which is actually over seven days is a pretty good return. So we didn't even get our direction 100% right. It went in our, in our favor by three bucks. It didn't even get down to our targeted zone and our butterfly is still profitable. Now take a look if it gets down to 45. Now in the, in the best case scenario, earnings comes out, stock drops to 45, and now our butterfly is expanded to $1.94, which would be a 223% rate of return on our investment. And so you ask yourself, well, if the butterfly has a maximum value of $4.40, why is my butterfly only worth $1.94? And that's a great observation. And the quick answer is those options still have seven days of time premium left in them. And the difference between the 440 maximum profit and that $1.94, that, that would represent time decay. So one, you could choose to just take the butterfly off now and have and book a, a, dollar, you know, a profit of $1.34 in this case. Or if you thought that the stock was going to gravitate around the 45 level for the next, you know, next seven days, you might just hang on to this butterfly and uh, hope that time decay go, works in your favor, if that's the case, because if the stock just sits around 45, time decay will be working in your favor. And as we get closer and closer to expiration, that butterfly is going to get closer and closer to its maximum value of $4.40 every single day. So... Uh, once again, that would be entirely up to you. Um, you know, what, what happens is you run the risk of the stock making a big move either up or down and foregoing the 60 cents that you paid for your, your options. Because remember, if that stock finishes below 40 or um, above uh, 50 at expiration, then the butterfly would just be worthless and you'd lose your 60 cents. So once again, that would be an individual call you just have to make and everybody's different. Everybody has their own individual risk tolerances and uh, that's just the decision that the investor would have to make at that given time. So the last example, stock goes down to 40. So in this case, it's overshot our price target. It's actually below our break even price. So remember our break even price was $40.60. Now it's actually through our break-even price, and our butterfly has expanded to $1.32. So even though it actually overshot our price target, we still made 120% return on our initial investment. And that's because these options still have about seven days of time premium in them. So, so you don't, we got the direction right. We didn't even have to get it 100% right. We got it, whether we undershot or overshot, you can see that as long as we're in that neighborhood, that our butterfly does expand and can be profitable. So now let's look at the flip side. Well, stock reports earnings and they're great earnings. And instead of going down, the stock goes against us. Well, with the stock up two bucks and the volatility down 25 points, now our butterfly has collapsed. It's worth only 26 cents and we would have lost 57% of our investment. Now, at this point, we could choose to just close the butterfly and salvage what we can out of the butterfly, or if we thought that maybe stock over the next seven days would roll back down to 45, we could hang on to it and hope that that butterfly expanded again 
get closer to its maximum profit potential of 440. So that would be up to you as an individual. Once again, if the stock goes to 60, you can see that it's worth three cents. The butterfly's pretty much worthless. It's $15 away from that initial price target of 45 that we had and would have very little value. All right, so now let's take a look at a bullish scenario. So we have our investor now who is bullish on this fictitious pest control company, Beefly, and Beefly is trading at 120 per share. And our investor thinks that this stock has a good chance of rallying to 130 over the next couple months. So rather than buying 12, you know, 100 shares, which would cost us $12,000, we are looking to purchase an out of the money butterfly. So what does this look like? So we see that we can, about two months out, we can buy the August 25, 30, 35 butterfly. And that costs us a net debit of 50 cents or $50 per, $50 per spread. So once again, this gives us a targeted zone centered around 130, okay? That would represent an 8.3% premium to where the stock is currently trading from 120. The cost for each spread is 50 cents or $50 per spread with a maximum profit potential of 450. Remember difference in strike minus what we paid, $5 minus 50 cents is 450 or 450 per spread with the stock right at 130 at expiration. The trade makes money with the stock trading between 125.50 and 134.50 at expiration. So anywhere between those prices, you know, you have a $9 range, our butterfly will be profitable come expiration. And once again, we're looking for a less expensive way to play, in this case, a bullish forecast. So here's our butterfly. We've established it. We've put it on for 50 cents. You can see that the the current price is at 120. The butterfly is out of the money. It's it's $10 away from our our current stock price. Our break even 125.50. Uh, it's our lower long strike plus the debit we paid. So 125.50. Our other break even is our other long strike, the 135 call minus the debit that we paid 134.50. So that gives you that zone of profit that we have. Maximum loss is the 50 cents that we paid for the contract. Maximum profit is 450, the difference in strike minus the debit that we paid. So now let's look at some scenarios here. So as you can see in this case, uh, there's no earnings or anything. The volatility is just kind of average. Um, and in this case, we put on our butterfly for 50 cents. So in this case, the, the first scenario, stock rallies from 120 to 125 over the next 30 days. So 30 days to expiration. You can see that our butterfly, as long as volatility is still the same, has expanded. It's worth 78 cents, which would represent a 56% return on investment. If it goes to 130, our sweet spot, it expands to 81 cents. So that's a 62% return on our investment. Now remember, those options still have a lot of premium in them. So it doesn't achieve that $4.40 until we're, if we're, unless we're right at, at strike, 130 at expiration. And in this last scenario, the stock goes down to 150, so it goes against us, and we've lost 20% of our investment, but the butterfly is still worth 40 cents. So we could reanalyze our outlook. If we were still bullish on the stock, we might just hold on to the butterfly because we do have 30 days to go till expiration. Or if we if our if our position changed, maybe we just we just close it out and, and take a small loss and, and and live to fight another day. Now let's look at this scenario. So now we're gonna play around with seeing how volatility and movement has a little effect on this as as an effect on the butterfly. So in this case, the stock is trading 130, so it gets to our price tar target. And, and volatility has actually gone up. So now it's right at our sweet spot, but volatility has gone up by five points. Maybe there's rumors that this stock could get taken over. Maybe they've got some technology that they're about to, um, to introduce. Option prices are getting bid up. So even though we're contract neutral, we're long, one, we're long two contracts, we're short two contracts, 
the fact that we're short the body, the at the money strikes, which are all time premium, volatility going up slightly hurts us to a degree. It doesn't change the risk, you know, the fact that, you know, the most we can lose on this butterfly is the 50 cents that we paid or the fact that the maximum that we can make on the butterfly is 450. But in the, in the near term, a, a rise or fall of implied volatility can have a little slight effect on our position. But as you can see, even with volatility going up five points and the stock at 130, our butterfly has still expanded to $1.43, which represents a 186% return on our investment. Likewise, with the stock at 125, it doesn't quite get to our price target, but it's still going in the direction that we want it to. With volatility up, our butterfly is worth 114 or 128% return on our investment. And if the butterfly is unchanged, the stock is, is sitting right at 120, it's right at the place that we started um, with seven days to go to expiration, volatility's up. Now, actually on the flip side, now because we are long the 125s, which is closer to the stock price, actually a rise in volatility is kind of helping us a little. So our our butterfly now is worth 51 cents. So you know we're up two percent on our on our investment. So we're really not we're not losing money. We're not really making a ton of money, but our butterfly hasn't been affected to that much. Lastly, as you can see, if the butterfly goes, if the stock goes against us, and it goes in the wrong direction goes to 115 you see you see that the butterfly collapses now it's worth 12 cents or a loss of 76 percent on our investment now let's look at a, a more realistic scenario if typically when stocks go up volatility goes down and vice versa when stocks go down volatility goes up so in this case we're going to look and see what happens when volatility goes goes down so in this case, uh, stock is at 120, and our so stock hasn't gone anywhere, and our our butterfly is worth 31 cents with seven days to go to expiration, and uh, so we've lost 38 percent on our investment. So our butterfly is worth 31 cents, and we could choose to just close it down and salvage some of our investment, or if we we, we really thought the stock would continue and you know has a good chance of going to 130 over the next seven days we might just hold on to it if the stock goes to 125 well we're getting the direction right and our butterfly expands so now volatility is going to um, the the butterfly is going to be worth 125 so it's expanded it's gone to our, our return on investment is 150 percent at 130 our sweet spot you can see now volatility going down is working for us and we got the direction right and our and our butterfly now is worth a dollar 89 or 278 percent return on on our investment and lastly if the stock goes to 135 as you can see it's overshot our break even our break even remember being 134.50 on the upside now it's through our break even and but our butterfly still has expanded and is now worth 117 or 134% return on our investment. So as long as you get the direction right, um, you can see that even if it undershoots or overshoots, the butterfly can be profitable. All right, so now let's take a look at what happens um, if we get assigned on our calls. Well, we don't wanna get assigned on our short calls. So anytime you are short options, you risk early assignment, especially if they're American style options. So an option holder, remember, an option holder can exercise for any reason at any given time. But generally it has to make economic sense for somebody to exercise early because if somebody, anybody who's holding an option, if they decide to exercise early, what they are doing is they are essentially accelerating their expiration. And by doing so, they forego any time premium left in that option and that would accrue to you, the seller. So there's got to be an economic incentive for somebody to exercise early. So why would somebody exercise a call option early? Well, the, most, the, the biggest reason why somebody would exercise a call early is for a dividend. So let's, let's assume that 
we put on a butterfly and let's just say it's a, a 45, 50, 55 call butterfly. So we're long the 45 calls, short two of the 50s, and we're, we're long one of the 55s. But today, now the stock is trading $60. So it's $10 away from our short strike. And maybe they've got a week to go to expiration. And let's say tomorrow the stock is about to go X dividend for 50 cents. So if the time premium in those short calls is less than the amount of the dividend about to be paid, then those short calls are strong candidates to be exercised early for the dividend. So something you want to keep in mind. So because remember, those if the stock is trading 60 and you're short the 50 calls, those options have a minimum have an intrinsic value of $10. Okay, they might be trading for $10 and 10 cents. So that extrinsic value or time premium, that extra 10 cents over parity or, or ex intrinsic value, that represents the time value. And in this case, um, the 50 cent dividend would be larger than the time value of roughly 10 cents. So those would be strong candidates to be exercised early for a dividend. So what can you do in that case? Well, to avoid assignment, you would just close down the spread. You could just trade out the butterfly. Yes, you would take a loss. But you knew that going into it. You knew that we had a limited loss going into the position, and we were going into the position with our eyes wide open, so that's a risk that we assumed. So position management. As we talked about earlier, many traders will close out of these positions before expiration to lock in profits. Very rarely will somebody carry a butterfly all the way to expiration because your likelihood of, of actually having the stock go right out at your short strike, right on expiration, right on the close, is pretty low. Yes, it could happen, um, but it certainly, even if it happens, there's certain risks involved. As we talked about earlier, the, the fact that you have to make a decision about, do you want to exercise your longs? Are you going to get assigned on your short? So, once again, to, to mitigate that, uh, option traders, most option traders will just will trade out of these positions uh, before expiration or on expiration. As we, sh we showed earlier, the position can be profitable even without the stock being at your short strikes. So uh, for an at-the-money butterfly, theta or time decay is working in our favor. It's our friend. A lower implied volatility will help us in, the, in terms of an at-the-money butterfly. If we have a directional butterfly, in other words, an out-of-the-money call butterfly or an out-of-the-money put butterfly, a directional move that goes in our favor is going to help our butterfly as well. So achieving max profit while possible uh, certainly assumes unwanted expiration pin risk, so that's why we would close the position out uh, before expiration or on expiration. So what happens if we get an adverse move? What if the stock goes against us? What if we put on that 45, 50, 55 call spread and the butter and the stock is now trading 60 like we were talking about earlier well we could just close down the position period or we could choose to roll it meaning we could close down our existing position and roll it to a higher strike maybe we put on the 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 55 60 65 spread if we thought the stock was going to be pinned at 60 or um or maybe we just shut it down and just you just take our losses and, and move on. So clearly, each individual is different. Everybody has their own individual risk tolerances and, and, and outlooks. So this is going to vary from trader to trader. All right. So some of the key points to go over with the traditional butterfly, once again, it's either all calls or all puts. And... The profit and loss profiles of call butterflies and put butterflies are roughly the same. So um, you want to choose a risk reward that, that the current premiums offer. So once again, you want to put on trades where the risk reward is somewhat in your favor. And ideally, you want to be selling, you know, taking advantage of a market where implied volatility or option prices are on the higher end. So it allows you to sell that high implied volatility while taking limited risk. Um, the beauty of a butterfly, you can take a bullish, bearish, or neutral stance on the stock. And typically, people who like to sell options, there's a sweet spot for selling options, and that's roughly about 30 to 45 days to expiration. So uh, options don't decay in a linear fashion. So theta or time decay, 
options, longer dated options decay less than shorter dated options. So the, as the, the closer we get to expiration, the quicker those options decay. And 30 to 45 days usually is the sweet spot for people who like to sell options. Now, there's no guarantee by just by selling 30 to 45 day options, you're going to make money. But, but that's where time decay is, is working more in your favor versus longer dated options. All right, some other key points for at the money butterflies. So volatility is our, our Vega position is somewhat neutral. Now we're contract neutral because remember we're we're long one, short two, long one. So contract contract wise we're we're neutral, but because if a stock is right at the middle strike, if we're we have an at the money butterfly and we're short the at the money strikes, we're going to have a slightly negative. Vega position, meaning that if volatility goes up, it's going to hurt us a little bit in the near term. And if volatility goes down, it's actually going to help us. So we're going to be slightly short volatility. On the flip side, positive theta, so time decay is, is our friend. And a directional butterfly or an out of the money butterfly with a call butterfly or a put butterfly tends to be less expensive. Well, they're less expensive because they're lower probability events. So once again, we have to get the timing and we have to get the direction right. So because of that, the, these butterflies tend to trade for a lower price. But if we do get the direction and the timing right, we can be rewarded pretty handsomely for, for taking a nominal amount of risk. So once again, if, uh, if you're good at picking direction, <laughs> uh, certainly look at butterflies. They, they can be certainly great strategies to deploy especially in volatility is on the higher end, which is kind of what we've been seeing lately in the markets. So unless, and finally, unless all options are expiring uh, worthless, in, in other words, if our, you know, butterfly, if we have a call butterfly on and, and, the, and the stocks, that's a 45, 50, 55 call butterfly and the stock's trading 30, well, in that case, all options would just expire worthless and, um, and we just leave it. But, uh, uh, typically, if we are at, you know, if our butterfly is at the money or near, if it's profitable, most traders would choose to close those positions down on or before expiration to avoid that assignment risk that we talked about, the pin risk that involves the, uh, the body of the butterfly or the short strikes. All right, well, that is our presentation. Um, I know we have some time left. There's there's about uh, 12 minutes of time left, so um, certainly uh, we can look at some uh, Q and A. I know Mark and and Bill have been answering questions along the way, uh, so uh, why don't we address a couple questions here? So we have a question from John. Uh, let's see, what is the difference between a butterfly and an iron butterfly? Okay. Well, that's a great question. So uh, today we talked about strictly just the iron, I'm sorry, the regular traditional butterfly, which involved just calls or just puts. There is something called the iron butterfly, and the iron butterfly is essentially the selling of two different credit spreads. So think of it as if a stock's at 50 and you sold the 50 straddle, so you sold one call and one put at the 50 strike, so you're short the straddle. At the same time, you bought the 55, um, 45 strangle, okay? So in other words, you, you, you sold a bull put spread and you also sold a bear call spread, okay? And you, you've essentially sold an at the money straddle and you bought an out of the money strangle. So that would be, uh, the iron butterfly, and uh, certainly you would do a you would you put that on for a, a credit. So the max profit you would you could make on that position would be the net credit that you took in on that position. Um, so certainly different variations. There's also another variation that's actually quite popular now. We didn't get into it today because this is more about traditional butterflies, but it's something called a broken wing butterfly. And a broken wing butterfly would be an example where Let's say we stocks at 50, and instead of doing the 45, 50, 55 call butterfly, 
we did the we bought the 45 calls sold two of the 50s and we bought one of the 60s so one of the wings the the in a traditional butterfly the strikes are equal distance apart in a broken wing butterfly one of the strikes is extended so it gives us a little more wiggle room to the upside sometimes in some cases you can put on those butterflies depending on the prices you can do them sometimes for a credit um you know that gets that gets a little more in depth but um you know there are variations of these of these butterflies there's also something known as as uh, as a condor and a, and a condor is 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 like a an elongated butterfly where instead of uh you know using uh three different strikes you're using uh four different strikes and in a in a traditional condor if it was a call condor you'd use a 40 45 50 55 spread and so it's it's four different options so certainly and then there are the iron condor so there's all kinds of different variations but you know that that's that's we'll get to that at a different webinar um let's see Debbie asks, why would I use a call butterfly versus a put butterfly for an at the money? If I'm using an at the money trade, why would I why would I use a choose to do a call butterfly versus a put butter, butterfly? Well, once again, a, a call and put butterflies, the, the P and L characteristics are roughly the same. Uh, you might choose to do a uh, uh, you know a call or put butterfly because maybe the open interest on maybe you choose to do a put butterfly because the open interest is is greater the puts trade more so than the calls and you have um, an easier time getting in and out of the position now remember when you put on a butterfly there's going to be uh, three different strikes so there's three legs so you really don't want to be crossing a wide bid ass spread these are generally strategies you might want to deploy on stocks that trade more frequently because every time you you cross a wide bid ask spread that's going to cut into your profitability um, and stocks that trade more frequently are easier to get in and out of and if you have to get in and out of three legs it, it's going to be it's going to be easier to do that in a stock that trades more frequently than a stock that doesn't and once again price is everything so uh, you know you want to get you obviously want to get the best price or bang for your buck and uh when you're when you're putting on a butterfly when when options are trading a lot more you're going to be like i said you're going to be able to get in and out a lot easier um, on those particular issues than a stock that trades just by appointment let's see what else do we have here okay some one of our viewers asked how do you pick the right exchange to use for the average option trader um well you know usually most you know obviously there's 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 different exchanges there's uh like i said earlier there's five different parent exchanges and 16 different sub exchanges so generally uh when you when you trade options you're if you if you're just if you're buying on the offer and hitting the bid most brokers would route you to the nbbo which is the national best bid or offer so you should always be getting the best possible bid or offer at that time. Um, certainly, you would have to speak with your broker uh, if you're if you're looking to uh, direct it to a particular exchange. You would have to speak with your broker regarding that. But if it were um, uh, if, it, if it if it's if it's the NBBO and you're just you're hitting a bid or buying an offer. Uh, the, the the best possible market would be the be, be the NBBO and that's what you would be getting. Let's see another question here. Uh, if a butterfly is contract neutral, wouldn't the bay could be neutral also? Well, keep in mind that if you're doing an at the money butterfly, okay, at the money options are the most sensitive to changes in implied volatility and that's for the very reason that um at the money options the stock is trading fifty dollars and the 50 call and the 50 put there's no intrinsic value in those options they are strictly time premium so it's all time premium for both options and because of that the the a, a rise in implied volatility 
would have a uh, would hurt that position if you were short those options, and a decrease if, if you were short those options would benefit that that position. So once again, for a, an at the money butterfly, uh, you're going to be slightly even though you're contract neutral, you're going to be slightly short Vega or volatility. So once again, if you pay fifty cents for that butterfly or a dollar or whatever, that's not going to change you know, how much you could lose on that butterfly. You can still only lose what you paid for it. And the most you can make is the difference in strike less what you paid for it. But in the near term, you might find there might be some noise that those options, you know, especially if you're, you're short, those at the money options might rise and fall depending on how volatility change changes. What are the conditions I should place a butterfly trade? Do we look at Delta? Well, certainly, uh, you could, um, you know, the uh, you know the delta. Obviously, a directional butterfly is going to have a slight delta. Okay, obviously because you're going to want it to go up. You know, in the in terms of a call butterfly, or down in terms of a put butterfly. And at the money butterfly is going to be somewhat neutral. So, um, what conditions should I place a butterfly trade on? Well, we talked about that earlier. When you really want to put a butterfly on when you have an opinion on a stock and implied volatility is high. Because once again, you want to take advantage of high implied volatility and selling that high implied volatility, uh, but also risking less. In other words, capping your exposure, but at the same time selling high implied volatility. So that's, that's when you would choose to uh, place a butterfly um, you know, yeah, Delta is going to move around a little bit depending on whether it's out of the money or, um, you know, in the case of a call butterfly or out of the money in terms of a put butterfly. Um, but that's just going to show you your bias because obviously a call butterfly that's out of the money, you want the stock to rally. A put butterfly, you want it to go down, um, directionally speaking. But you know up front how much you can lose. If you paid 50 cents for that butterfly, that's the most you can lose on that butterfly. So you know up front. Uh, once again, you get to trade with your eyes wide open, and um, that's part of the beauty of butterflies. Let's see, another question. Can you use the midpoints of bid ask on the butterfly spreads? So, um, I mean, maybe to value them, yes. I don't know if you'll ex actually be able to execute them at the midpoint. Obviously, you know, market makers like to trade their, they like to buy on the bid, sell on the offer. And, you know, they want to make their bid ass spread. So once again, um, trading butterflies, you know, you might, you might be able to execute at the midpoint. Um, you know, certainly you could use the midpoint to somewhat value the butterfly and then kind of figure out your pricing around that. But um, uh, once again, uh, you want to look at putting on these types of trades in stocks that you can get in and out of relatively easily so you don't have to cross a wide bid ask, which would drastically impact uh, your overall profitability. Okay, so let's see, what is the iron butterfly? So we talked about that, uh, I mentioned that earlier, I think it was the first question, but once again, the iron butterfly is instead of using a all calls or all puts, instead of using a debit, combining a debit call spread and a credit call spread, or a debit put spread and a credit put spread, you're combining two different credit spreads. So in the case of, if once again, I'll, I'll go over it again, if the stock is trading $50, and uh, we would, in that case, we would sell the 50, for an at-the-money iron butterfly, we would sell the at-the-money 50 put and buy the 45 put against it. So that's a bull credit spread. And we would also sell the at-the-money 50 call and buy the out-of-the-money 55 call. So it's the combination of two credit spreads. And the most we can make on that position is the amount that we took in or the credit that we took in for that position. So that is what the iron butterfly is. So... Uh, Thank you, everyone, for your questions. We've run out of time. I appreciate everyone uh, sticking around and for uh, supporting OIC and our webinar, webinar series. For more information, certainly reach out to us at uh, optionseducation.org. Reach out to our investor services desk at options at the OCC.com. Please uh, access our 
OIC YouTube channel. We've archived many of our past uh, webinars that we have done. So anytime you want to review a subject, whether it's an iron butterfly or an iron condor or implied volatility, whatever it is, I guarantee you we've done many different videos that uh, you, can, you can take a look at and reference for your education. Um, in closing, I just want to say our next webinar presentation will be on July 8th where uh, OIC's Director of Retail Education, Ed Modla, will be presenting pricing models and the Greeks. So you'll certainly want to take a look at that. And with that, that's the end of our presentation. So I just want to say stay safe, everyone. We look forward to seeing you at the next event and appreciate your support of OIC. Thanks again.